Hello, in this video we're going to be deriving equations to code a simulation for a conical tank. And so here we are given our conical tank diagram. And we are again told to create a simulation of the fluid height in the tank where the flow rate in is increased by 20% and the simulation is supposed to run for 5,000 seconds. We're given some dimensions for the tank. So the tank's top radius is 5 meters, the bottom radius is 1 meter, and the total height of the tank is 8 meters. We are also told that the whole of the drain has a cross-sectional area of 0.01 meters squared, and we are told that initial steady state flow in is 0.1 meters cubed per second. So before we begin, we need to make some necessary assumptions. The first one is that we will be beginning... at steady state and that all potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So the reason for these assumptions is that as we derive our equations, basically we're going to be looking to derive a differential equation that we can then plug into Google Collaboratory and using the solve IVP function that's going to essentially solve differential equations simultaneously if we give it initial value. And so these assumptions are important for defining our initial values and knowing where our simulation is initially starting at as far as also using energy balance. That's where the conversion of potential to kinetic energy comes in. Before we dive into all of that, let's just define our variables and see what all information we are given. So QN is going to be the flow rate in. Q out is going to be the flow rate out of the tank. R top is going to be the tank's radius at the top and we are told that this is 5 meters. Our bot is going to be the tank's radius at the bottom and we are told that this is 1 meter. Lowercase h is the fluid height. Capital H is going to be the tank's total height. AC is the cross-sectional area of where the fluid is. And then AH is the cross-sectional area of the drain. And we are told that this is 0 0.01 meters squared. We are also given that the Q in initially so we'll say Q in naught is 0 0.1 meters cubed per second. And so now we can begin deriving our equations. So essentially the equation that we're looking to end with is the change in height with respect to time. This is kind of our end goal. And so to get there, we can use a few different balances. The first one we're going to start with is an energy balance. So like I mentioned earlier, all the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So with all the fluid in the tank, as it's with gravity, it's going to force all the fluid out. We're assuming there's no pump, there's no force pushing it out. It's just the gravitational force draining the tank. And so the potential energy is defined as mass times the gravitational constant times the height, where kinetic energy 
is one half times the mass times the velocity squared. And so with the assumption that it's fully converted, the masses will cancel out when we set them equal to one another. And that's going to leave us with gravitational constant times the height equals one half times the velocity squared. So this is important because the velocity is what we're trying to isolate. And so if we isolate the velocity, that's going to give us the square root of two times the gravitational constant times the height. So let's say this is the velocity of the fluid out of the tank. And this is important because it relates us to the flow rate out. And the reason for this is because flow rate out can be defined as velocity times the area in which it's moving, like where the, flu the fluid is moving. If we check the units, the flow rate is meters cubed per second, and velocity is meters per second, while cross-sectional area or any area is going to be meters squared. So that gives us the units we're looking for. And so this actually allows us to define Q out as the velocity of the fluid out times the area in which it's moving out. And that's going to be the cross-sectional area of the hole of the drain. And so if we plug in this equation that we just isolated, that's going to give us that the flow rate out is equal to the square root of 2 times the gravitational constant times the height, all divided by the cross-sectional area of the drain hole. So that's the first balance. The second balance we can do is a mass balance. So what we know is over time, the volume is going to change. So that gives us the differential equation that there's a change in volume with respect to time. What impacts this change in volume? Well, the mass that's coming in and the mass that's leaving. The difference of that is going to be the change in the volume. And so that's going to be the flow rate in minus the flow rate out. That's our simple mass balance equation. But the issue is we are looking to get a mass balance equation with the change in height with respect to time. And so when we look at this diagram here, here is how the cross-sectional area is changing with respect to height, right? So as it moves, as the fluid drains or as the fluid increases, it's going to change with respect to height. And so the volume then is going to change with respect to height. And then the height over time is also going to change. So that's the differential equation we are looking for right here. But the issue is now we now have this change in volume with respect to change in height. Well, how else can we write that? Volume can be defined as the cross-sectional area times the height, right? But the height is constantly changing, so we can take the integral of that. So from zero to whatever the height of the fluid is. And if we were to plot this out, we can see that if we were to have cross-sectional area times the height, taking the integral would give us the area under the curve which is the volume. So then what we can do is if knowing this information, I'll just move it off to the side here, we can actually take the derivative of it and define the change in volume with respect to height as just the cross-sectional area. And so that leaves us with cross-sectional area times the change in height with respect to time is equal to the flow rate in minus the flow rate out. 
And again, we're going to need to isolate this differential equation, so that's going to give us the change in height with respect to time is equal to the flow rate in minus the flow rate out, all divided by the cross-sectional area. And like we defined with our energy balance, we know what the flow rate out is. So plugging that in, we have that the change in height with respect to time is equal to the flow rate in minus the cross-sectional area of the drain times the square root of 2 times the gravitational constant times the height, all divided by the cross-sectional area. So there's a few things that we now need. We now have, this is the equation that we were looking for up here, right? We now have this defined, and this is what we can plug into our code. But there's a few things, a few other variables that we need to also define. So like I said earlier, with solve IVP, we need an initial steady state and initial value, basically. So we're solving for the height, so we need an initial value for the height. So we can use kind of the same thing that we did with the mass balance, where we know that Q is the velocity, which is 2 times the gravitational constant times the height times some area. And so right now what we're looking for is the initial height. Right, that's the initial value we're looking for. And so we were given the initial flow rate in. So we can use the same equation using the initial flow rate in to give us the, the same equation we used up here for the flow rate out, we're going to use for the flow rate in, but the initial flow rate in. And then what we can do is isolate the initial height from there. So it would be just kind of walking through the algebra. That gives us the equation for the initial height, which is the initial flow rate n squared divided by 2 times the gravitational constant times the drain hole area squared. And so we will use this also in our code for the initial value. And then the last thing that we haven't really defined or talked about much is the uh, cross-sectional area. So we aren't given the cross-sectional area, and obviously it changes with respect to time, but we are told that the radius at the top and bottom. So what we can actually do is kind of throw this onto a plot because it's, it's a cone, so it, the cross-sectional area changes as you move down, because the radius changes. Um, but we are given, so let's say we define this here as zero, and we are told some radius here is the radius at the bottom, and the radius at the top is a little bigger. So this is, I believe, up here we define it. This is five, and this is one. And then we are told that the entire tank, so this will be the radius which changes as we change the height of the tank. So as the height of the tank is taller, if we look at the shape of the cone here, 
logically, the radius is also larger. So it's going to have some sort of positive slope like that. And so if we just throw this on the graph here, let's say this is the height that we're given, which is 8 meters. That's going to be at the top here. And then the height here, I guess at zero. Oh. Excuse me. It has <laughs> the height zero it has the radius of one. So it's going to start here. And if we go like this, what this here, the slope of this curve, or this line, is the change in the radius. More specifically, the increase in radius. And so if we take our knowledge of the that, we know that the radius, the new radius, is going to be the increase in radius plus the bottom radius. And so basically that gives us that the radius is equal to the slope, which is rise over run, so it's going to be the R top minus R bottom divided by H, capital H minus zero, so we can just get rid of the zero, plus R bottom. And cross sectional area is just going to be pi R squared. And so this is the pi, or the radius that gets plugged in there. So we're going to use this equation we're going to use this equation and the previous initial height equation and the differential equation in our code, which we can now head on over to and begin coding. Okay, now we can head on over to con Google Collaboratory and code out the simulation. So the first thing we have to do is import some packs to allow us to use some mathematical functions, which is what import numpy is, and then from plotly dot subplots importing make underscore subplots. This lets us plot our simulation, and then from scipy dot integrate we're going to import solve underscore IVP. This is the initial value um, solver I was mentioning earlier and this is what we're going to use. So we're going to shift center. So now what we have to do is import all of the givens that we were given. Those were subplots. There we go. A little syntax situation there. Anyways, now we're going to import our, all of our givens, so input givens. So our top, we were told, is 5 meters. Our bottom, we were told, is 1 meter. The height of the tank, we were told, is 8 meters. The, I'm going to look here what else we were given. The cross-sectional area of the drain, so AH, is 0 0.01. This is meters squared. And then we're going to use our gravitational constant, which here on Earth is 9.81. And then we were also told that the initial flow rate in is 0 0.1 meters cubed per second. And then I believe that's all that we were given. Um, we want the end time. We want the simulation to run for 5,000 seconds. that's all we're given. If we're missing anything, we can always come back and edit it. So the first thing we're going to do is define the cross-sectional area of the tank. And for that, if we look at our equation here, we need the R top, R bottom, 
and height. And so R equals the radius at the top minus the radius at the bottom divided by the total height of the tank. plus the radius at the bottom and we want it to return so this function is going to return the cross-sectional area which here in this equation we said is pi r squared so we're going to use the numpy which gives us access to the um, mathematical functions like pi and we're going to do the radius squared so we can shift enter that again not forgetting our syntax. So now we can define the right hand side of the equation and we're going to have the dependent variable which is the time and the independent variable which is the height or excuse me the independent variable which is the time and the dependent variable which is the height and what we want it to return is the right hand side of the equation. So it's going to return it as an array just because that is what is needed for the solve RVP syntax wise and so if we look at our equation here, we have that the Q in, flow rate in, minus the cross-sectional area of the drain times the square root of 2 times the gravity times the height. This is the square root of that. And we want these checking parentheses, making sure I have all those accurately. <laughs> And that's going to be divided by the cross-sectional area. Okay. So now you can see it so kindly highlights what we're missing. So we're missing the flow rate in. and the flow rate in is going to be the initial flow rate. We wanted to increase it by 20%, so that's going to be multiplied by 1.2. And then the cross-sectional area is going to be the function that we just defined up there, so AC tank with the given heights of everything. And so now, before we run everything, we need to check a few things. So first is, I never defined what the initial flow, or I did define, define the initial flow rate in, excuse me. Um, this height here is not involved in the cross-sectional area, but it is used to solve the right-hand side of the equation. And so we need to make sure we put it in to the AC tank and then also into the right hand side of the equation. So now what we can do is we can do the uh, solve IVP and we need to give it the initial height. Um, and so the initial height is what I did not define. So the initial height is, as we derived earlier, the initial flow rate in squared divided by 2 times the gravitational constant times the drain cross-sectional area squared. So now we can plug all of that into solve IVP. And if we look at solve IVP, it lets us know what all we need. So we need the function. So that's going to be the right-hand side. We need the T span, which is how long we want it to go. So we want it to go for 5,000 seconds. And then we need the initial value, which is H naught. Um, but we need it as an array. So we're going to put those in brackets. And then we need 
the method, which right now we're just going to let the, do the generic RK45 method. And then we also need to do the dense output. Dense underscore output. And we're going to set this to true. Um, this is for uh, whether or not to compute continuous solutions. So the default is false, but we want it to be as true. And then we should be able to shift enter. I believe this needs to be zero to the end, possibly. So it says we are missing the argument H. So now we have the solution of everything. And so what we really are interested in is the soul here. Um, so that's going to be our solution is solve IVP dot soul. And so now what we can do is we can go and plot this. So we're going to have, um, we need a like plot for the timestamps. So that's going to be np.lin space from zero to t end, let's just say a hundred um, literally spaced. And then we want to have the height that's going to be the solution of t plot, and we just want the first value of it because it's going to be an array. We don't want the array. So now we can graph out our simulation. So we're going to make a subplot. So we're going to just name it fig figure and then we want to add to this figure a scatter plot and so the x-axis is going to be the time and the y-axis is going to be the height and so now we have our simulation we can make it a little prettier and we can update the layout of the plot so we can make the width 600 and the height 400 Just enter okay there's our graph so, so i do have to make one quick um, fix on this code here um, when I was doing the radius right here, I have to actually do the top radius minus the bottom radius um, multiplied by the height. And the reason for this is the height of the fluid. And the reason for this is because it's dependent on the fluid. If you weren't to do, if you didn't have the multiplication by the height of the fluid, what would happen is it would be like if the tank had a constant cross-section it kind of makes it irrelevant um and so what happens is this actually makes it longer to run or it needs more time to run so we'll give it for 50,000 seconds so if we run all of these again this is the final plot that we're actually looking for